You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. After The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Revolution After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Revolution After Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome to After Buzz TV, NBC's Revolution, Season 2, Episode 19. Shh, what happens? <laughs> Shh, shit. <laughs> oh, see, I was trying to be, like, politically correct. <laughs> well done. <laughs> happens. I am your host, Megan Thomas, and with me today is the beautiful... Francesca Dugan. And, more importantly, we have a special guest in the building! Woo! And guess who it is? Dun, dun, dun. It is Charlie from the show, the beautiful Tracy Spiridakis. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm so excited <laughs> to have you here. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to be here. How did you feel about watching this episode? Um, I it was fun. I always I, we never get to watch them until they they air, so it's always fun to see it all put together for sure. Were there any surprises um, when you watched it and said, "I didn't realize it was going to be like that"? There are no surprises, but I just loved because um, I didn't get to see. Usually, we work together. We see the way that everybody else is kind of performing the things. But I loved watching Billy. Like I loved watching all that stuff with with Miles because you know with you know he was on his own and all that that was happening. He just did a beautiful job. Everyone did a beautiful job. Yes. Yeah. Now, okay, so. When I watch you do fight scenes, I'm always I'm always just looking at it and I'm like, this girl's kicking some tail. What's the worst injury you've gotten <laughs> on the show? I haven't gotten any actually doing stunts, which is which is great. Our stunt coordinator um, looks out for me and makes sure that I, I, you know, very few hazards are in my way. Um, I've gotten hurt literally just walking, like really completely innocently walking into something or tripping over something. That's usually my deal. <laughs> That's so crazy because all the time I'm like, she's got to have a bruise from that. That that should have left a bruise even by accident, something. And the fact that you're getting hurt walking. <laughs> I think, I mean, I did have after mine and uh, Jason's fight, there was, you know, a, the slamming up against the metal, you know, so there's a, there's a few bruises here and there, but I don't okay. really consider those. Those injuries. There's more, you know, war wounds. <laughs> oh, Charlie's tough out here. <laughs> tough, tough girl. So, of course, I'm sure you're getting asked this a million times. But we have to talk about hashtag Charlo. Oh, here it is. <laughs> here it is. What, so everybody sees that there's some kind of chemistry there. Yes, David Lyons is hot. <laughs> I mean, I think anybody in their right mind would have chemistry on camera with him. But what do you think this comes from? Why do you think people are so just excited to see you and Sebastian Monroe together? I think it's because it's it's the one relationship that's kind of forbidden. Do you know what I mean? Like there's such a... There's such an intensity in both of the characters, but also it's it's so wrong that I think people find it right in so many ways. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? Like the I mean, there's a giant age gap between them, and then there's the fact that he I don't there's he killed her brother and right. is responsible for her father's death and all the things that have really gone wrong in her world are totally his fault. Um, but then you know they have this kind of weird um, intensity with each other that that ends up coming out, I guess, and. and I, I assume that's where it's coming from. <laughs> Wait, was it a surprise when you start hearing people and seeing the hashtag Charlo? Or were you just like, oh, that's normal? No, I was definitely <laughs> surprised. I was, I, I mean, I remember the first I heard of it. Somebody had sent me a, a link to a video that they had made on okay. YouTube about the two characters. And I was like, this, first of all, well done. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Like, I right. watched some of those videos. I'm like, holy, wow, good job. Like, I don't even know how, to, how you do it. But, um... But also just seeing how how invested uh, you know a lot of people are in in these two characters teaming up was just really interesting. Yeah, and I will say our other co-host Ryan Hooks has he has continuously said there's something going on between those two. I just know sooner or later Charlie and Monroe are gonna hook up. And every time he said that, I was like, you're that's horrible. Who thinks that? And next <laughs> thing you know, there's a hashtag. I was like, oh gosh, yeah. I guess I'm the one that was nice. <laughs> from, from everybody. I mean, right. I was I was home visiting in Winnipeg, and my my aunt, who is this beautiful Greek woman, you know, watching the show with me, and she comes up to me in Greek. She's like, "You two 
I want to see you two together. <laughs> you are the cutest. Like she's totally, she's trying to ship it. <laughs> she's right. all for it. So it's pretty, I don't know. I think we're all on board. Yeah. <laughs> right. There you go. It's a note for the writers. All right. <laughs> yeah. So we have a couple of people who tweeted us on, on Twitter and they, they had some questions for you. So one of them, this one comes from at downtown Abby. How do you feel about the character development of Charlie from season one to season two? I'm very excited about Charlie's development. Um, I had a, a really great time, you know, in season one, discovering the, her vulnerable side and seeing what it was that she uh, finds herself weak to and, and insecure about, and then learning from all of those things and experiencing them all, and then being able to apply them into season two and making her so much stronger. And, um, you know, have, I'm, I've been having fun playing with her moral compass and, you know, what's a right decision, what's a wrong decision, why. And, you know, I've, I've had a really, really great time watching her grow up, honestly. Um, so yeah, for me it's 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 been a blast. I I, I I I will say you you are an amazing actress and I love how in season one, you know, we see these beautiful blue eyes and they're just full of innocence and happiness and joy. And then the second season, these blue eyes are like piercing, <laughs> icy blue piercing dead eyes. Dead inside. Right. <laughs> dead inside. That's kind of the ongoing joke on set. <laughs> that I have dead inside eyes. Um, uh yeah, because I I that's what's so fun and I think what was really great about these coming these episodes that have just come up is that we've we've seen her be so tough throughout the season and then getting to watch her heartbreak at the with Jason was really fun to play i mean it was super sad obviously on all levels but it was it was it was nice to see that because i don't think of vulnerability as a weakness and right. i don't think of it i think it's it's quite powerful to be able to access that you know and and she does, and uh, I, it was it was great to play. Awesome. So Nova's Noda, Nova's Noda on Twitter. She says, or they say, I'm sorry. Can we expect more Charlie and Miles from onward? Uh, we do see more of them in the in the end of the season. Yeah, we do see them kind of uh, pair up a little bit. There's a really great episode where they get to team up, kick some ass, which is fun. I'm excited to see that. So. Crispy1132 says, even though Jason just died, who do you think is next to go? Oh, God. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't like to think about that stuff because I don't <laughs> want anyone to go ever at any point in time. So I have no idea. Is it always a surprise? Do they give you the script like maybe a week or two before or do you get the entire season at one time? Oh, no. We get okay. we get the script, you know, a few days before we shoot. And, uh, and usually when somebody's going to, you know, going to go – we find out about it a couple weeks in advance, you know, so they mm. give us a bit of a heads up. Okay. For our hearts to break it down. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Instead of it's like, actually, well, today is J.D. Pardo's last day, everyone. And you're like, yeah. no, no, wait. No. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay, so how did you feel when you found out that Charlie had to kill Jason? How did Tracy feel? How did Tracy feel? <laughs> and then how did Charlie feel? As I was sad. <laughs> I was so sad. I mean... When they told us about it, I didn't know. We knew that that he was uh, going to be going, but we didn't. I didn't know how. Right. And then when it all came about, and and uh, I read it, I was like, oh, um, it's sad. I mean, we've we've all been together since the pilot, and uh, and it's always. I mean, regardless of how long you, your your team member's been along, we just we really all get along really really well. We hang out all the time together. Right. So it's, whenever somebody goes, it's it's always heartbreaking. Um, as far as the character goes, I mean. I think it's um, it, it's a constant theme on our show where you're kind of put in a situation where it's a, a it's a shit choice and a shittier choice and you have to make that decision. <laughs> right. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to say shit on this. Shit but happens three times. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and so I you know that that it I what I loved about the situation is that we really get to see uh, the consequences of having to make the decisions that ultimately save her life or your life in, in this world that we live in and, and what those consequences are and you have to live with that now and um, and how your instincts kick in for, for you know, whatever you're doing and um, there's there's the aftermath, so. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the best thing about working on this show? Oh, just one thing? <laughs> you can name them all. But I don't, something that sticks out to you. For me, honestly, it's, it's – uh, I mean, getting to play somebody who's as badass as, as Charlie is is a lot of fun. I love all the stunts and everything. But my favorite thing is is everybody that I work with, when it, which I know sounds so cheesy. But we just have so much fun together. And even in this episode when, when Billy's kind of off on his own, I remember we were all reading it. And I'm like, dude, you're going to be on your own for like half of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I know. It's so weird because 
we were filming at opposite times. So whenever we all had a day off, we'd go for dinner, we'd go hang out, and we're like, see you later. Uh-huh. You know, he's just <laughs> there working. Um, so for me, getting to show up, and not only with the cast, but the crew as well, getting to show up at work and hang out with, with you know, your, your closest buddies is, is always I mean, I, we're very fortunate. I hear that that's not very common. So, um, right. yeah. You guys have a little family. We do. We do. Yeah, it's good. And what would you say is the most challenging part about working on the show? I'd probably say, I mean, the hours get a little rough, you know, but not too bad. This season hasn't been too, too crazy. But the hours, you know, you get a little <laughs> a little tired. Mm-hmm. How many how many hours on average would you say you guys filmed uh, a day? You, I mean, probably at least, you know, 14. At least. <laughs> Season one was a little different. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. so a little, you know. That's, who needs sleep? Who needs sleep? You don't need sleep. I know. You're trying sleep to stay alive. Yeah, <laughs> Without the lights. It's fine. You got to stay awake for that. Really so what would you say, give us something behind the scenes that fans would be so surprised to learn about you guys. That we're giant goofballs. Really? All of us. Is it so hard? <laughs> is it hard to go from being the goofball and then saying, okay, I have to kill you, Jason, or I have, this is serious. Like, is it hard jumping in and out? When you're, when I, when I have to do those, I mean, I, I can only speak for myself, but uh, when I have to dip into those places, yeah, I mean, that, that, these last two episodes, are the, when there's that kind of emotional content, I, I'm off in the corner and, you know, trying to, which is always, I remember looking, looking at Billy, there was a scene that actually wasn't in this, uh, this episode, it's at the beginning, and there was, it's me, me, Billy, uh, Dave, and Matt. And I have to be, it's post, post shooting and I, you know, I'm all in that state and they're all sitting in the corner laughing and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> crying with my headphones on. Um, so, but yeah, you, uh, when it, for me, when I have to go to the emotional places, I'm kind of off on my own. But outside of that, uh, no, I, I, I kind of like goofing off and then we get, we get all the goofing happening beforehand and our, our rehearsals are pretty funny <laughs> they should always tape those right um <laughs> and then we can we kind of get it all out of the way and then we kind of we can roll into it that's how we all work which is pretty awesome do you guys play pranks on each other um we don't necessarily play pranks on each other as much as we take the piss of each other like constantly <laughs> poor dave dave i make fun of dave all the time <laughs> uh and elizabeth i always joke around that elizabeth has a superpower where she can find the positive in anything and billy is the exact opposite <laughs> somehow simultaneously uh it, it's just a really great great thing watching them together and then elizabeth is is she's so like she always gives loads of compliments and especially to the guys she's like she's just really loving and, right. and lovely beautiful and so she'll be like you look great today you know and with me with the guys all come in right on her tail and i'll make fun of them because i feel like you need to balance it right, right? right. you can't you can't be blowing up that ego they're like exactly. giant head trying to walk exactly. out of the trailer so it's my job <laughs> to bring it I back take in. it very seriously there you go good job uh, a quick question though D- does david Lyons keep his accent like keep his bass accent on when you guys are filming or does he hop in and out um for the mo- from i'm trying to remember because you kind of you you forget i forget um <laughs> for the most part he does when we're on set he tries to keep his american accent okay. but yeah i think he slips up every once in a while I think now. I don't know. It's all one blur. <laughs> <laughs> all those fourteen plus hour days, I'm sure. Yeah, you. and you just kind of because I when I don't know. I don't even hear his accent anymore, even though really? I make I, I make fun of him <laughs> for a lot of things. But um, but I don't even hear it anymore. I don't know. I can't honestly answer that. You guys are family now. Yeah. So let's get into this episode. We'll start off with you, Charlie. Okay. And um, we see that Charlie is coming back with the crew. She's just had to kill her, the love of her life. Mm. And I was sad. Um, and I see there's just some, there's a really deep darkness going on with Charlie and rightly so because of what she's had to endure. Um, I think she had a choice. And I think what, you know, what Miles is saying is true. You know, it's not your fault. You had to kill him. It's, it's, there's nothing you could have done. What did you think about that scene at the very beginning? It was just, it was really sad. I mean, to see you in a daze, just everything around you was going in slow-mo, super dramatic. It was a very intense beginning, and it was a precursor to just the whole episode was just intense. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I love how when you, when everybody gets back to the camp... The first thing that Charlie does, she's like, Aaron, you scared me. How could you? I thought you were dead. I'm happy you're here. And then she sees her mom. She's like, hey, mom. Like, <laughs> what's up? What's happening? You're old news. Um, 
Yeah, well, I mean, with Aaron, the last time she doesn't know when she'll see him again, and she's just lost somebody that she loves, right? And then being seeing somebody else that she thought she lost for sure. It's a big, it's a big moment between them. And then with okay, and then especially because Rachel is a bit, she worries about Rachel right. or about Charlie. Sorry. So there's that. Uh, I feel like I'm saying about very Canadian, and I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna call myself out on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so with Rachel, she you know knowing that Rachel's gonna see Charlie and get all worried, so she's like, hey, I'm good, I'm good. I guess. Right. Are we ever going to see in this season a different relationship between you and your mom? In what way? Um, not so, I don't know, more close-knit, the softer side. Are we ever going to see you crying, Mom, I need you? I can't ever see Charlie crying and saying that. You know, and I think it's because I, I don't think that she would say, I need you to anybody. You right. know, she's come to, I think, season one, maybe, but... Um, She's come to this place now where, and she's been on her own for a certain amount of time. And I think she's come to this really strong, independent place that, you know, while she and her mom are building their relationship, there is still that, that exterior and that, that she has that, that kind of numbness inside of her, you know? Yes. I see it. I was just hoping one day. Maybe. <laughs> one day. Please. Maybe. Charlie, need your mom. <laughs> All right. So then we also see that um, our wonderful friend, Miles, is not back or excuse me yeah so we also see that there's some stuff going on aaron's there they set off to go find um monroe's boyfriend which i thought was oh, hilarious that connor high. says that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> find your boyfriend yeah. for a second i was like wait what <laughs> right like, right yeah, I got it. <laughs> because uh they got split up the rangers came and uh, there were seven of them and of course to shake them off monroe i mean miles has a very great idea and he kills six of, he kills all seven six miles at first this is intense man Yo. you don't mess around with miles that's crazy mm -hmm. so then of course they split up they don't know where he is um and they set out to find him did you think it was a good idea for all three of them to take a separate road i didn't think so and you know that happened twice in the episode again with charlie rachel and um Monroe later they're like let's split up again I'm like why do we keep splitting up <laughs> right I don't know you just you, you don't know who's out there but I guess Miles took care of a lot of them so I know I'm always scared because I'm a scaredy cat and so many times we've discussed on the show like I would never survive if I was here <laughs> I would have never made it out because I would have been gone like the very first episode in the first season no like, way I'm dead but I, I'm always like no don't split up What's gonna happen? You don't have each other to like just go on one road at a time, like together. Yeah, but then, but then he might, we might run out of time, and then he would die. I know. Then the episode would be over. I know. And the whole hour would be over. And yeah, like we didn't even go to the other yeah. two roads. We also Damn. always joke about if only we split up. <laughs> right, right. We also always joke about how fast you guys travel. <laughs> right. On yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, we would never run out of time. They That's would travel true. all three right. paths. Right. And still make sure. it. Sure. Back to Willoughby. But yeah. I always say, I think that's the beauty of having Willoughby not be a real town because then you don't really know where it's located in Texas. So you can't go, no, it's not going to take them a week. That's right. It's going to take them longer. So we're always like, where is Willoughby? We will never tell you. We will, we will never tell you where it is. It's this mysterious land. Right. It just keeps moving and yeah. shifting. It's like the island. <laughs> of course. That's so then we see that uh, Tom Neville shows up out of the blue. Out of the blue. And he just happens to find Charlie. And he is on a mission to find out what happens to his son. Do you think do you think Charlie should have told him right then and there what happened to his son? I don't know. I think that he well, I mean, like I said, the whole episode was intense, so he was in the zone the whole time. Um he probably would have shot her right away at the beginning if she had said something, but he kind she kinda led him on a little goose chase, kept the hope alive. So I think that actually benefited her in the long run. I think the quote of the night, there's many quotes of the night, yeah, but one quotes. is your ass made out of candy. Yeah, no kidding. Exactly. No kidding. <laughs> so when inappropriate. When I read it, I was like, what? what? <laughs> Wait a minute, what? That's what you have to Excuse say. Me. <laughs> but I love how your face was like, what? Like, uh, exactly. Yeah. It was crazy though, because you know he was making those comments, but then he kept being like, Jason's idiotic and blah, blah, blah. He kept just bashing Jason too, just, so ang so right. how like emotional just dis emotionally distraught he was calling him his idiot son right and you just see the hurt in your face Charlie you well and that was what was really fun about shooting it that way um because Charlie's allowed to feel and and 
show whatever it is that she's going through because her back is turned to him. Well, I probably shouldn't hit that. Um, <laughs> because her back's turned to him, and and so she she can you know emote if she needs to, and and uh, which was which was interesting to play. We had a good time filming that scene actually. So then you take him to this shack, um, and no one's there, and. Uh, like the smart girl that Charlie is. We see as she tries to go, grab a knife, doesn't work. He he knows what's going on here. And the thing I like about Neville is that Neville can read people very well. Like that, yeah. Just like that. He knows off the hand that Charlie's lying to him about his son and his son's whereabouts. Um, what is, Okay, honest to God opinion, ladies. Did you think he was going to shoot that gun? Yes. <laughs> well, not because you knew the script, but I'm saying. I feel like, yes, because that's the reason that Charlie had to lie to him in the first place. Because he's not somebody who takes prisoners. He's not somebody who forgives. We see the way that he was with his own son with this intensity. And, and um, I, I think Charlie definitely knew that that he was going to putting it to that. That that was that moment for, for me was... Um, when she says, if you're going to shoot me, just do it, is because he says he's going to he's going to go through miles. He's going to go right. through, you know, find Rachel Monroe, everybody. And those are that's that's all she's like. She just killed the you know, her first love. And all she has is Rachel and Miles and even Monroe and, you know, and Connor. And so she just knows that unless she steps up to the plate and takes the bullet, literally, then he's going to go through and, and hurt her family. So she has to she has to suck it up and just own up to what she's done. Francesca, do you think that Neville knew that he didn't have any bullets left? Or did you think he honestly was like, I'm going to kill this girl? At the very end, you mean? Well, because well, he, he fired the round. Me. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So do you think he knew there was nothing left in his gun? At, oh, you, I don't think so. So you think he he really yeah, planned on I think Charlie? he did. I, I think he did. I think it just his adrenaline was kicking, especially since he fired the first round. And I, I mean... I love how they took you outside the mm. house and we were both like, looked back at you yeah. like, wait, did you just die on the show? Right, right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think his adrenaline that he missed, he's standing right in front of Charlie firing at her. So he probably wasn't even keeping track. You know, like like you said, he's so, um, I forgot the word we just used for him, but like he's intense and um, he doesn't take prisoners, whatever. But he's, you could tell just how emotionally like, thrown off he is so I really think he wasn't keeping track and he thought he was gonna do it and, and keep in mind too that he's never liked Charlie right he hates Charlie right you know and always has because Charlie is that link she always pulls Jason aside she always had this and they had it with each other Jason and Charlie I mean it was the same thing Miles had a really hard time trusting Jason because they had this energy with each other that would whatever Jason would do she would trust him right and, you know, no matter how many times he screwed her over she'd be like nah, all right <laughs> you know and so I think that that Neville just has never liked her so being in the situation you killed my son you know I don't know I just I'm just always like happy hopeful here <laughs> I really honestly when I saw that, I was like, you know what? Maybe because Charlie absolutely loves Jason, he now can see that. And he's some some way, somehow, in Neville's cold, dark heart, he realizes that because she loves my son so much, I'm, I'm going to scare her, but I'm not really going to kill her. Like, I don't want to kill her because I see that she loves him. And I should kill her, but I'm not going to. But I'm still going to, like, shoot You're this so gun. Sweet. I know. <laughs> I know. Tracy's like, that is so but wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's really sweet. <laughs> I know. But you know what was cool? At the end, when he does pull the trigger, I think they do have a moment where um, when they are looking at, at each other after, you know, we realize that there's no bullets and everything, that, you know, for me, it was a, it was an I'm sorry. And there's like a recognition that they've both lost somebody that they love. And, and for Charlie to now look at him and no longer see him as Neville, she sees him as a father who's just lost a son because right. of her, you know? And so, you know, we had that, that, that cool little moment at the end. And I think it's going to be good for um, the next two episodes. We're going to see how this has affected good old Charlie because now she, she tells Connor that she doesn't want to die, which is different because remember before a couple episodes, Charlie said she didn't care. Yeah. She's like, we're going to die. Whatever. Like, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So this will be good. Yeah. I, thought, I thought that was a good, those were a good like monologue. Just you, I realized that I don't want to die. I want to be alive and I want Miles in it. And it's kind of funny because you you and Miles kind of paralleled throughout this whole episode. Um, and so you see Miles go through the same thought mentality and everything. And he's a cute little kitty hanging <laughs> on the wall. Hang in yes. there. <laughs> and same thing, you know, 
he has a moment and realizes, no, there's people I still want to live for. And I think it's, I think what I really love about the, the Charlie Miles thing is getting to watch their growth and development from season one to season two, because now, you know, they, she was the thorn in his ass for so long, (laughs) you know, and now they are, I mean, we get to see later on, we get to see them fighting together and, and kind of, she's a valuable asset. He recognizes that, but he adores her and she adores him. And so it's, it's actually really sweet. Oh. See, there is some sweetness. Yeah, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere inside the dead eyes, there's some sweetness buried. So that's a good segue. So Miles, we see, has killed the Rangers. He's done a great job. However, he got sliced. And that was a nasty cut, by yeah. the way. Shout out to um, all the people, the set directors. Yeah, or, is that who does that? No, special Make, effects. Yeah, special special effects. effects. Amazing. And makeup, yep. They did a really good job because that was disgusting. Just kept spurting out they blood. They did a great job. There was mm-hmm. actually a lot of blood splurting. You saw <laughs> the Rangers. It's like gushing. Like, oh. <laughs> How many hours do you spend in makeup when you have like um, the black eyes and, and the our, our makeup artists and hair, they're all amazing. I mean, they, they get, it's not that long. Really? Honestly. I mean, for him, it probably was longer because oh, they had yeah. to do a, a whole thing. But for the black eyes and everything, they just, they just pop them out. Do they put do they put a lot of makeup as far as like foundation on you or are they just like kind of like eh, we're just gonna let you go because we're in the wilderness worse than the wilderness <laughs> they do um they put a a coat but it's not uh, a coat a layer of paint <laughs> no they do they do a, a thin thin layer just to kind of even out the red knit, like the skin pigmentation but I mean there's been tons of times where I've been watching it, I've been like there's my zit. <laughs> oh, I remember that one. Uh, there it is. I, you know, that's so funny because I, when we were watching, I was wondering if you sit there and kind of like, you know, analyze or critique yourself and judge yourself. Or like, oh god, like <laughs> that hair is out of place. Or if you're actually, you know, watching the episode. I, uh, I don't critique myself visually because I, I, you know, it is, it is what it is. I, I, <laughs> but it's, I, I critique the crap out of myself for my work. Yes. I mean, I think that's kind of an actor thing where you're just watching, you're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, here we are. Um, but there's, I mean, there's things that I, that I can say that, you know, are, you know, I've, I've, I've gotten better at watching myself, but it's still hard. Yes. I was going to say, that's what I was going to ask. Like, is it ever easy to watch no. yourself? Oh, uh, yeah. No. I'm probably not. It's a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, Miles gets to this area looking for a first aid kit. And there's a first aid kit. Woo! <laughs> what are the odds? With one Band-Aid. Oh. Is that kind of isn't that kind of funny? Yes. One it was day. like I'm just gonna. This tease is the you. worst yeah. day ever, as yeah. he says. <laughs> like yeah, but then he falls into the hole trying to get it, and then the wall comes tumbling down on top, perfectly proportioned right over the hole, not to the left or right, but right over. Yeah. When I said that, I was like, yeah, this is your worst day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially. Sorry. And so of course he's trying to get out. He's you know he's got a lot of fight in him because I feel like with that kind of a cut on your side, he did a lot of like movement he's like exactly stacking chairs thinking. he's like trying to lift this wall off this just hole. when he with the shovel like just that i know that core workout right, right there yeah i'm like i'm surprised it's not squirting out anymore right but so he's a trooper it. yeah well, miles he's... is badass <laughs> miles is the badass <laughs> right right you know what i mean and so and so of course that's something that um connor says too he's like you know he'll be fine you know don't worry about him and um we see that another dynamic is happening here and that is between Rachel and Sebastian Monroe and that was intense as well we found out some new material mm-hmm. dun, dun, dun. There it is. and we always wondered this the whole season had did something happen between Monroe and Rachel and we find out that they had a night in Philly and no one forced her and they weren't and eating. no one forced her. <laughs> that's, what he's, that's what he's saying like no one forced you <laughs> like yeah. I wait did she slap him yes okay, okay. Yeah, I thought it was just going to be like a whole on brawl, but it was quite the opposite. What What did you guys think about that kiss, though? Was it like a weird like, uh, or was it hot? I was a little <laughs> grossed out because of the, because of the what happened. She's like, I'm your prisoner. And he's like, no one forced you. And then there's a kiss. Like, that's a little awkward. It wasn't like a hot kiss like Miles and Rachel. I, I have hot kisses. <laughs> like that. I feel like if <laughs> if their dynamic was, I mean, the whole time they were going back and forth at each other while they're on the way. If it hadn't been as intense, it might have been like, oh, but no, it was definitely very like, wait a minute, that was just unexpected, completely awkward. Don't do it again. Do you think? <laughs> right. Here's do so you think Rachel likes Monroe? No, I don't Not think at all. so. I've never seen, I mean, and maybe, but I've never seen that ever 
come about? I don't know. The way that she looks at Miles compared right. to the way that she looks at Monroe, you know? I don't know. What do you think her night in Philly was about? F- Philly cheesesteaks? <laughs> no? Obviously. <laughs> She's like, yeah, oh, I get a Philly cheesesteak? Yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> that's what it was? Oh, my God. It's horrible. Hello. <laughs> What do you think it was about? Do you, do you feel like it was something that, like, for her, like, does she feel pressure? Or do you think she really liked Monroe? I mean, he's good looking. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it was one of those, you know, Stockholm Syndrome moments. Micah? Right. Like right? Might as well I'm here. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So that's, that's interesting, and I hope we get to see more of this uh, for the next two episodes to get... I hope they just don't leave us hanging because I feel like that's important. Is do you, Do you think Miles knows about them? In about Philly? About them, yes. I don't know. I probably not. It's just kind of weird. Rachel kind of been. Rachel's Miles. been around the block, she, honey. <laughs> she's been around. <laughs> Your mom's been around. <laughs> a bit. I'm just saying. Sorry. We always kind of tease about that. We'll be like, who is my father? <laughs> I mean, really. Right. And we always joke around about it. But um, that's funny you say that because right. we always kind of wondered if Miles was your dad. Everyone always asks about that, honestly. But there's been no hints to otherwise for us, to right. our knowledge. And I feel like, and it's something that, that Billy answered a little while ago where it's, I feel like at this point it might be. The, the obvious answer would be to say Miles. So I, th- I feel like they would probably stick with the Ben thing. But we honestly don't know. Ah. And it's been asked about pretty well since season one. People yeah. have been wondering. I kind of want him to be your dad, honestly. Really? I do. I want Poor Miles ben. to be your dad. Well, I'm saying Ben's dead. So there's nothing. There's not much we can do now. Sorry, Ben. We love you. <laughs> Ben's you? dead. You know what I mean? But I feel like, you know, should this get renewed for a third season, I really would like to come out that Miles is your father. I kind of, you know, honestly, I would I would kind of argue the the opposite just just because just because and because um I like that it's the uncle niece relationship between them. I don't know, like he's yeah. I like that dynamic between them cuz he ends up being more her her best friend. Right, that's true. Do you know true. what I mean? Like he never kind of fathers her. He never tries to be that person. He right. along like I mean he he was in season 1 there's obviously the different dynamic, but at this point they're they're just kind of they're at that buddy place where you can see that relationship happen, you know? Yeah. And I do like that, I will say. As long as it's not Monroe because then this whole sh- Charlo would just Go that up more. So <laughs> incredibly awkward. That's so weird. And now that I don't know how how Charlo holds up, especially now that we know that Rachel and Monroe have had their own relations. This is just getting too weird. So I don't know if Charlo. I mean, it just makes Charlo a lot weirder than it already. A lot is. weirder. You know what I mean? So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then of course we see Miles is he's starting to give up. He writes his his I'm, I'm sorry. sorry note. Um, with a piece of chalk that magically, magically appears. I don't think it's chalk. I think it's uh, from the wall. I okay, because I, yeah. I was thinking that too, but then it was like shaped so perfectly, <laughs> like a piece of chalk that you get out of the box. You can't find those in, in a broken down home? Apparently, oh. apparently you can. I like not, the I'm cup, not hip to this. I like the cup with Yoda on it that I found yes, in the cabinet. I, I don't know why that was very yeah, yeah, humorous yeah. to me. <laughs> so, of course, he's writing that. Oh, my in, God. What? Star Wars, right? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yes. That's why. There's okay. been kickbacks to Star Wars the whole time. The whole, well, right. you know what? That's, pilot. that's right. true because Ryan always points them out whenever. Right. Yeah. Whenever we have them. Yep. And so, of course, we see that he has a flashback and it goes back to the burning shed um, that we saw early on in, in the season. And we were always always wondering, what is this? What is? Did he kill someone? Is he like, what's he doing in here? So now that we see that this is something that happened six months ago, um, and this is something that Priscilla was talking to Aaron about, mm-hmm. which we'll get um into it in a second but this is where the nanites come about and give him some of a kind of an illusion and it's ben and it's ben saying that you know you slept with my wife you're probably happy that i'm out the way now you're happy that you know you're trying to take care of my daughter and my wife and you're only gonna end up killing them and then he sees the vision of them being dead and of course he hits that and and so i think it's really been messing with him because he burns the shed down and it's not necessary. What did you guys think about that scene? Um, it well, it all makes sense because just with the whole Priscilla saying about that. Um, but you know, we we're just talking right now. He, you, I mean, you guys have the uncle niece relationship, but he, I feel like he does kind of feel like he's like a father figure for you. So 
when he's had that flash or when he six months ago when he did see ben it probably really hurt him and you know he called him a drunk and he was drinking and i think he kind of had just a moment of little a little bit of clarity right there does that make sense yes okay yeah and i think it's you know your your worst fear is being shown at you right um, yeah. you know it's it's the the one thing that he's tried to do the only thing that he's been trying to do is he doesn't even know what side he's fighting for necessarily all the time but he knows that he needs to protect these two right um and then having your worst fear be that you're they're better off without you and you're you're ultimately going to be the reason they die is a really harsh fear and insecurity to have and uh and it's not only in front of him but it's shown by his brother whom i mean you know there's a lot of weird feelings there for him too so but and here's the thing that I will say about what Priscilla said, which is we can't help you find Miles because um, he. it's probably better that we don't because he's got some dark notions. Yeah. I feel like this flashback showed the opposite. I don't feel like it showed mm -hmm. dark notions. I feel like it showed a loving heart and because he was so upset and so mad at the fact that his, his brother came and said his truest fear, which is you're going to get them killed. He was so hurt and taken aback by it that he burns down the shed. Right. So I don't think it was a dark notion. I feel like it shows love. And the nanites are stupid. But the nanites aren't necessarily <laughs> out for the for the greater good of Very humanity. True. They're they're kind of out for their own purpose right now. So that's also something to think about. Mm. Very true. They yeah, and you know, um when uh Priscilla's trying to make Aaron kind of show her how to be human, she doesn't grasp that human is like emotions. Right. And so that's that's probably why Priscilla was like, oh, a dark moment. But when really it was, like you said, it was him showing yes, something positive. And then, of course, the positivity comes back around with the Fender guitar pick. And the moment that he sees beautiful Rachel. <laughs> and that was enough to save him. I thought it was going to be, honestly, I didn't think that was going to be enough. I thought it was going to be like, I'm sorry, Rachel. I thought it was going to be like another I'm sorry. And then uh, magically, here's Rachel and like Bass pulling oh, yeah. pulling the wall. I don't know, but I didn't see that coming. And the fact that he had all the MacGyver tools that you needed to like blow everything he, up. He like, burned the kitty up. Yeah, he burned, <laughs> he burned the kitty. Yeah, yes. And who would have thought? Like you spray the what was that? Like a spray can or spray paint? I he sprayed around. I don't even know. I kind of feel like it was. My guess is bug spray. <laughs> there, that could work. Yes. But I'm just like, he had all the right tools in this little shed, including the... He really was MacGyver. It. Right? He, he, he made, like, something... He cauterized his wound. Like, he just oh, did everything. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. That was, he did... Yeah. He, he did, did such a, a great job. Right. Oh. So he deserves to live because that... I you know. <laughs> yeah. He to deserves... think of that to make right. it to happen, you know? So then we will jump over to Priscilla and Aaron, and Priscilla just will not... Priscilla will not give Priscilla her body back. Um, until she gets to to getting all the human experiences that she can, including listening to music, including eating pizza. pizza. Which, how, by the way, like, how are you gonna get pizza? I'm not That's, entirely sure. I know. It's gonna work like, out. You know, like, Aaron's like, I'll go find some cows to milk to make the cheese. But right. she I'll do also anything. can make power happen, right? Right. So she can like bust out an oven. Right. She can find the ingredients. Right. I feel like she could just conjure them up too. I feel like sure. she'd be like, you know what I mean? Yeah. She's just, I really think, she's not trying to vacate Priscilla's body, obviously. No. She doesn't want to leave. No. Sorry, Aaron. She's not going anywhere. She's, that's why she's sending you on a goose chase. You know what I mean? What do you think is going to happen with Priscilla and the real Priscilla? Uh, I don't know. I hope, I hope Priscilla survives it. I still want to know if there's going to be a nanite baby in Priscilla. Mm. Look at, don't look at me. <laughs> Would you like to elaborate, I don't know Tracy? I nothing. I have zero information. Um, I think it's weird that the nanites are doing experiments on people. So we found oh, hey. out that yeah. they've done more than 3,000 experiments on people. And they're kind of just, what do you think they're experimenting on to see like I think what, they're what people's breaking point is? I think they're trying to find weak people so they can, you know, get into more bodies and take over. So they want the strong people. They don't want the weak ones. Well, I mean, weak mentally so they could get in them ah. strong physically so they can do whatever mm. kind of crazy nanite army thing going on. Or, but I mean, like, yeah, 3,289 people they show themselves to. I don't, I don't know. Why do, why do they need? 
I, this is such a hard question because I know the actual. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I'm going to listen okay. to okay. your guys' guesses. You're like, they're so wrong. Um, yeah, I like that one. And I also think that, yeah. But then I think, why do they need people? They don't need people. Or do they just like the sensations that they get when they're in people? Does that, that's some weird fetish. You got to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I just feel like anything they need to do, they don't need anybody. They really don't. Think about it. I mean, I guess technically, they can, but they if they're in someone's body, they can get away with, it's not as awkward as like, oh, there's all these fireflies doing this true. thing. True. I guess that makes sense. So then um, we see Priscilla does not want to help um, get, she find mean. Miles. She's being mean. Priscilla is mean. Priscilla is mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you know who we're talking about. <laughs> Priscilla is mean. And here's something that's really great. If you're um, a wonderful fan of the show, make sure you go to NBC Revolution's website because there's always little tidbits and little hints and just little extras that you can see about the show. And one of those things is Aaron's journal. Mm -hmm. Do you guys read oh, Aaron's awesome. journal? Have Aaron's journal is out there, yeah. It's so it's so informative. So one thing that Aaron says in the journal is that um that he Pris first of all, he loves him some Priscilla, but he makes the mention that it is he loved Priscilla so much that he came out of the matrix when he was offered it. You know what I'm saying? He came out of the he didn't accept being in the dream state right. that the nanites gave him because he in his journal, he says that he loves her so much. He didn't think it was all right for him to stay in that world, knowing that Priscilla was still out there in the real world. But then he also flips it and says Priscilla didn't love me enough because she took that pill and she's in the dream world. She didn't love me enough to say, you know what? I'd rather be out there in the real world with him than to be in this fake world with my kids. And so that's really crazy to say because it's true. I think if you really love somebody, yeah. wouldn't you like go be with them for real in real life? And want to make sure that they're okay. Right. But then there's also, there's something that's got to be said. I mean, I'm not a parent, so I don't understand. Right. But a parent with your kids, being separated from your kids, I feel like it doesn't mean that you, that she loves her kids more than she loves him. It's just, I feel like there's something, there's some sort of nurturing calling that moms must have. Right. With their kids. You know what I mean? But if they're not real, right? They're fake. They're fake. Kids. So no, that was that was interesting. So make sure you go to NBC's website and check out the extras like Aaron's journal. Every week there's a new posting. Also, make sure you guys go to iTunes and rate us, give us five stars, and let us know what you guys think about that question. It's really easy to subscribe to our podcast. All you have to do is search After Buzz TV. NBC Revolution, and you will find us. It's free. Click subscribe. And if you love After Buzz TV, if you love our after show, make sure you support a wonderful show on Oxygen called Chasing Maria Menounos. In case you don't know, Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro are the founders of After Buzz TV, and they have their own reality show on Oxygen. You can see all of the hard work that they put in for After Buzz TV, what they put in into their lives. And if you truly love us here at After Buzz, watch the show, tweet about it, like their pages, everything. And you can always catch them every Tuesday at 10, 9 central. Yep. And you can find them on iTunes, Amazon, and On Demand. Woo, 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 woo. Okay, so before we get out of here, a couple more questions for you, Tracy. Sure. Are there any updates on a season three? No updates. None yet. A uh, couple weeks, I think we know. Okay. okay. Yeah. A couple what you, weeks. What do you, are the producers asking you guys to do anything special, like wear t-shirts, like, please, season three? Or like, are, is, there any, <laughs> is there anything that they have you guys doing? Hashtag save Charlo. <laughs> yeah, Charlo must live. You must know. No, I mean, no, not that, not that uh, I know of. I mean, I don't know. I, they, no, it's, it's still, it's, it's kind of out of our hands. Right. So it is what it is, hopefully. You know, I hope be so. Great. The t-shirts help, I'm the just saying. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to get on that right away. I don't know how I didn't think of that. I'm going to get on that. Immediately. Yeah, exactly. So tell us what's next for you professionally. Um, well, we only have a couple months break. So um, I'm, I'm just out here in LA feeling it out, uh, trying to see some, some, different projects that hopefully I can hop on with during my hiatus. And then um, I feel like we're going to go back. So we'll see. I hope so. You good. have to. I know. I you guys, please. We need season three. That would be great. It would It would be great. So that's kind of how. So I, and until then, I'm going to go traveling and uh, see what happens. You're going to go traveling? Where are you going? I'm going to go to Europe. Ah, have you ever been? Mm -hmm. Oh, are you gonna go back to the motherland? Greece? I may, I may dabble. <laughs> Do you have family?
family there still? Devil all around. I do have family. Ah, mm-hmm. you have to visit them then. I know. I agree. That's so awesome. Tracy, it's been so amazing yes. with you. Thank you so much for stopping yeah, by with thanks, us. guys. We love you. Where can your fans find you? Um, I have Twitter, even though I'm horrible at it, and I'm going to apologize again uh, <laughs> that I suck at Twitter. But it's TR Spiridakis. And then I do the little Instagram thing, which is Spiridakis. Um, I'll try and do better. And uh, <laughs> thank you for all your lovely tweets. I love you all. All right, and Francesca, where can they find you? Instagram, Twitter, and occasionally Vine, XOXO, C-E-S-C-A. All right, and also, if you want more, if you want to go in-depth into Tracy's life, we have a spotlight on with Tracy Spiridakis. All you have to do is search for that on YouTube and iTunes, and you'll find it. And then, yeah, we get Francesca here goes way deep into her life. (laughs) You'll find so much stuff. You have to watch it. (laughs) And I'm, of course, your host, Megan Thomas. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at MegScoop, like scoop of ice cream. Until next week, guys, two more episodes. See you later. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.